Hello, and welcome to the Sustainable Region. I'm Candace Ng. Christmas, it's a time of celebration, bringing together families and friends. But a wave of leftover food, gift wrap, and product packaging hits our transfer stations over the holidays. That's why Metro Vancouver started a campaign six years ago called Create Memories, Not Garbage, with gift-giving suggestions and ideas for celebrating the season without generating a lot of waste. Memories are also the focus of the Vancouver storytelling series, The Flame. We partnered with series producers Joel Wirkinen and Deborah Williams to tap into the holiday memories of some of Vancouver's best storytellers. Over the past six years, their stories, melding humor, pathos and wisdom, have served to highlight something that can get overlooked in the hustle and bustle of the holidays. The things that really matter to us at Christmas are connections with family and friends. So with recycling and reuse in mind, we picked our favorite flame stories from years past to share with you in this special Create Memories edition of the Sustainable Region. We don't celebrate Christmas because we're Buddhists. Um, we got Buddhisty stuff at home, you know, altars and stuff. We pray to our ancestors. We celebrate the lunar calendar. We all have two birthdays. But if you were to come into our house on Christmas Day and hit a mute button, it would look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> I have three sisters, two of them live in Ontario, one in, the, in Montreal where, you know, my parents' house um, was. So, you know, we'd all come together to uh, Brossard, which is like a burb off of Montreal, to my parents' place. As the family came in, they would just kind of dump the presents there. And we'd have this huge pile of presents. A full compliment on Christmas would be my mom, my dad, my three sisters, uh, four boys between all of them, three brother-in-laws, uh, my friend, my best friend Pierre, uh, who is Cantonese, and um, five or ten family friends and their kids and myself. I'm 17, and I'm looking at this mountain of gifts. And I'm like, something's missing, man. Like, something's missing, man. Right? I'm like saying this in my head, you know? And then suddenly, all of these, like every Christmassy thing I'd ever absorbed in my life goes crashing through my brain, right? Like the Grinch who stole Christmas, you know, Charlie Brown Christmas special, right? All this like, you know, all my friends' houses had Christmas trees and stuff, and I'm like, we need a tree, man. And, and I realize now that I think what I was feeling was I just, I wanted to be what I thought was uh, more Canadian. You know? So, <clears throat> uh, so I go to my mom, right? Because, you know, she's the boss. <laughs> and uh, I find her on her perch, you know, smoking her Benson and Hedges, right? <laughs> you know? She's like this big. I'm like, hey, mom, um, I think we need a Christmas tree, right? She goes, what? Why? We don't celebrate Christmas. I'm like, yeah, I know, Mom, but, um, you know, wouldn't that be cool? Like, all the gifts and the kids are here and the Christmas spirit, you know? Let's get a tree, right? No. I'm like, okay, Mom, uh, let's get a tree. No. Mom, let's get a tree. She looks at me, slaps me with her eyeballs. No. And so I take it. Ugh. Okay, Mom. Buy it for me. For my birthday. Because my birthday is in December. And she's like, You want, you really want a plastic tree for your birthday? I'm like, Yeah. Right? So she's like, No. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, uh, okay, okay. Buy it for me for my birthday and for Christmas. So she grins, looks at me, 
okay. <laughs> no presents, no money, no cigarettes. Yeah, because I smoked at the time, right? And I'm like, oh, yeah, no cigarettes, right? She's like, okay. So it's Christmas Eve, right? She gives me some cash, I go to Sears. I go to Sears, it's still open, and I buy a tree in a huge box. Bring it home, it's one of them plastic trees, right? I open it, you know, I'm setting it up. It's one of those like color-coded wire branches that you stick into the middle of a green stick with the holes, right? And I'm setting it up, kids are running around, everyone's freaking out. Kitchen is hopping, right? Like my mom is cooking. And um, so I finally like get the tree set up, right? It comes with tinsel. So I'm like, wow, awesome. And uh, I bought some, <laughs> bought some lights, right? I'm just about to like plug it in. You know, I'm wiring it to the basement and stuff, right? So I'm like, Ma, hey, uh, Ma. What? Ma, c- come here, I, w- I wanna show you something. I'm cooking the noodles! I, I know, I know. It's just, you, the noodles will be fine, just, you know, I physically go, right? Grab her. Somehow in the middle, she's found a way to light a Benson and Hedges, <laughs> right? So I'm like, how'd you, whatever. So, you know, she comes over, right? And, and she's looking at, at the tree and stuff, and I'm like, watch this. Plug it in. Boom, right? Boom. Lights up. It's like, it's so beautiful. Like, it really is. It's my first tree ever, right? And I'm like, and it's literally my tree. You know, it's like a, it's like a, pre- it's like a present, right? And I, so, you know, I'm like, mom, right? And she goes, do what? I'm like, what do you mean do what? What, what does it do? I'm like, so we, it, it we put the presents underneath it. Look, I put all the presents underneath it. This is, this is Christmas. Right? And she goes, oh, 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 oh. Like she's like being polite to me, right? Like, oh, oh. Walks away. Shrugs and walks away. Back to the giant walk. Right? I'm like, okay, cool. Whatever. You know? Whatever, whatever. I'm like so happy about it. Right? Um, so then dinner is being made. It's like this huge like mishmash of stuff. You know, like steamed fish, uh, rack of lamb, white white rice, uh, stir fried noodles. Always got to have noodles because they represent long life. Okay, um, you know, like uh, uh, mashed potatoes, uh, Yorkshire puddings. It's just like so many different things <laughs> at the table, right? And it's, it was great. You know, like we just ate it all, right? So we we finished dinner, and then everybody goes to the living room right, where my mom sits in this big couch chair, very much like, like a throne, you know, really, and she sits there like, like the queen. Uh, you know, somebody brings an ashtray for her, <laughs> somebody brings the Benson and Hedges, she doesn't even have to bring them herself, you know, like just boom, like it's like bang, it just all happens. And she's saying, and then the nephews and all the kids, friends of friends, they all like bang, into a living room, sitting around her on the arms of the big throne chair, you know, and they're opening gifts, just like tearing it apart, you know, like, ooh, ah, look at this, grandma, you know, and all this, look at this auntie, you know, all this stuff, and they're like loving the loot. And, and my mom is smiling, you know, she's, she's smiling, and the image is so vivid, you know, in my mind, because she didn't smile a lot. She was a person that worried a lot. And I was, her and I spent a lot of time together because when my sisters are all older, they're out of the house, it was her and I. And I was serious with her a lot. You know, me smoking my Dunhills, (laughs) you know? And we would just sit there in the kitchen being serious with each other, smoking our cigarettes, you know? (laughs) I'm like 17, right? (laughs) And, um, but once in a while, she would say something, or I would say something, and we'd, we'd laugh, just the two of us in this huge house, and we'd laugh and laugh, and 
her her laugh would be, would be so free and loud, you know, and and I didn't see that often except every year at Christmas time, you know. She would have this like smile and she would laugh, and it was um, you know so beautiful. And uh, you know, so as the years go by, you know, I, I tell this story, it's on a little chuckle, and uh, remember something here and there, and um, and you know, but this year. This year is like uh, kind of like a year of firsts, you know, for me. Um, because, you know, it'll be the first time, first Christmas uh, without my mom, you know, because she passed in, uh, in August. And I'm, you know, I think about the, this memory and uh, it, I feel like it just brings me so much like, I, uh, like I'm with my mom, you know, when I think about it, because it was like her and I a lot together, and those moments were really were really tight, you know. And uh, and that tree, like we had that tree for like ten years, right? It just like went on, you know. And um, and that tree is like somewhere in a, a basement or a garage right now, I guess, in some house in either like Montreal or uh, Toronto, and. Um, well, you know, I guess maybe I gotta go find that tree <laughs> this year. <laughs> Thank you. This year, create a Christmas memory. Knit a sweater, pass on your favorite novel, or organize a romantic dinner for two. Give a gift that will last a lifetime. Get ideas at creatememoriesnotgarbage.ca. I'm a mother, so I have guilt. I'm a single mother, I have a lot of guilt. A few years ago, I made plans to take my eight-year-old daughter, Sally, back to Ontario to spend Christmas with my family. She revealed that her biggest fear was that Santa Claus wouldn't be able to find her. And I said, well, we'll write him a letter. We always write him a letter. We'll just tell him. He's used to this kind of thing. He'll find you. Don't worry. So she wrote a three and a half page letter to Santa Claus. And there was a lot of questions. Do the reindeer live in the barn? Do you have horses? What's your favorite color? And by the way, did you notice that you have the same initials as I do? SC, Sally Cunningham, Santa Claus. Now, in Ontario, we stay with my brother, and my brother lives in rural Ontario, in the country. He has an acre of land. He has a 3,500 square foot home. They had snow, they had snow sleds, they had snow hills, they had snowmobiles, they had their house backs up onto a ravine, which he had shoveled off and made a hockey rink, an ice rink, that all the neighborhood kids came and skated on, complete with a bonfire and hot chocolate and lights and hot dogs. So pretty much we're staying in a Tim Hortons commercial. <laughs> it's great. So the holidays go well, and then it's Christmas Eve, and the kids are squirrely with anticipation because Santa Claus comes tonight, and we played board games and made cookies and uh, sang some Christmas carols, and then I tuck Sally into bed, and I say, are you having a good time? And she says, mm, not really. I wish we were at home. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I know, honey. Um, next year, for sure, we'll stay home. But let's just make the best of it, okay? So they go to sleep. And when we're sure that there's no creatures stirring, my sister-in-law and brother and I, we pour ourselves a rum and eggnog. And then we go into their bedroom, which is kind of like a huge executive hotel suite. And we wrap the presents that are from Santa. And I get the things that I bought for Sally. Three books and a sweater and a Webkins and some... Um, watercolor pencils and uh, I turn around and my brother and sister-in-law it's like they've hooked themselves right into the back door of Toys R Us there are so many gifts five times the amount of gear that Sally is going to get and my sister-in-law looks at my pile and she says is that it and she wasn't being mean she was really just looking going 
it really is that it. And I looked at this pathetic little pile of things and I went, oh my God, it's not enough. It's not enough. It's not okay. How can Santa Claus be so obviously unfair? And what, a, you know, I should have stayed home and I wrap the presents up and then I think, okay, the letter, I've got to write the letter. And so I find a green marker and a piece of paper and Dear Sally, thank you for all the wonderful questions you asked. What a special girl you are. Nobody asks these many questions, and I'm happy to answer them all. And we go to Hawaii when we can. We disguise ourselves, and I answer as many questions as I can remember, because she asked so many. And yes, the elves do take their hats off in the summertime. And so I take the letter and the presents, and I put them under the tree, and then I go to bed, and I cry, because I just think Christmas is too hard. So six o'clock in the morning, the kids are up, thundering down the stairs. Boom, boom, boom. Santa's here. Sally's still sleeping because she has, she has jet lag. We're on Vancouver time. I wake her and go, hey, honey, Santa Claus has come. Let's go downstairs. And sleepily and reluctantly, she comes down the stairs and chaos is happening. P presents are being ripped open, papers flying, bells and whistles are going off. Things are you know, it's cacophony. Sally goes over to her little pile. She takes the letter, goes back to the couch and snuggles down and she starts reading it. And uh, she's smiling and laughing and and then she's reciting things to me. Oh my, mommy, mommy, the, the reindeer like pancakes. And, <laughs> and Mrs. Claus does knit. And, and I'm like, okay, good. I'm still on eggshells. And then finally, um, the, all the presents are opened and the kids come and gather around Sally and they say, Sally, what are you doing? You still have a whole pile of presents you haven't even opened yet. And Sally says, really? And my sister-in-law says, what the heck did you write in that letter? <laughs> and then Sally says, oh, mommy, look at the last line. I did notice that we have the same initials, SC, Sally Cunningham, Santa Claus, and I am so proud to share them with you. I hope you have the best Christmas ever. And then Sally hugs her letter and then she slowly goes over to her pile and methodically, one by one, opens up her presents. And I look and I go, phew. <laughs> and I think, I do know my kid. And it's not about stuff for us. It's about believing. Merry Christmas. <laughs> That's our show for today. Thanks for watching. For everyone here at the Sustainable Region, I'm Candace Ng. May your holidays be full of great memories. See you next time.